Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Tor and this is Anthropology. Thank you for joining me in today's video. If this is your first time, welcome to my channel. On this channel, I talk all about things fashion, luxury related, mostly handbags, some commentary videos here and there. So if you're interested, please consider subscribing. Like this video if you feel compelled to and comment anything that resonates with you. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. So happy to have you here again. Please comment something down below. Let me know you're here. And yeah, let's get into this video. So I've been seeing a lot of videos lately and questions around quality. What is quality? What does quality mean within luxury? What does quality mean when purchasing a good? And do we always conflate quality with price? So this will be another podcast type video. Feel free to settle in, put me on in the background, grab a cup of coffee, whatever it may be, and definitely engage with this video. Let me know what you think quality is. Let me know if you agree with any of my points that I make. And yeah, let's just get into it. So I'll be breaking this video down into a few parts. The first part will be focused on what is quality. So what is quality in the literal sense? What is quality within the luxury sense? And what are some things we associate with quality? Next, I'll be getting into what does quality and price have to do with each other? What do quality and location have to do with each other? And then finally, what is quality control? I will be referencing a few different resources and books that I've come across and that I've read that are in relation to this, and I'll link them down below if you're interested in reading them further to have a more well-rounded and sort of more detailed perspective on the topic. So what is quality? In the literal sense, according to the dictionary, quality is the standard of something as measured against other things or of a similar kind, the degree of excellence of something. So basically quality means the product, the standard of the product that we give. If something is good quality, that means the standard of the product is very high in relation to other products. So quality is a relational measure. So it's something in relation to something else will basically dictate where it sits on the scale. When we think of luxury fashion, we often think that it is high quality. It is at the top end of the scale in relation to products. There are mid-range quality items, there's low quality items. Think of it as the scale. Luxury is probably at the top end of the scale, or at least is perceived by consumers to be at the top end of the scale, hence why they associate it with the price. Lower quality goods are often at the bottom end of the scale. We often associate that with lower quality, lower standard of material, etc. So now that we've got that definition out of the way, I wanted to get into a few things that we associate with quality. So one being attention to detail. So for the, I guess, purposes of this video, I wanted to highlight two of the bags from my, I guess, own collection. One being the Celine Nano and the other one being this Marc Jacobs, the tote bag. So both of these obviously different bags, but fairly similar in terms of shape, color, design, what it may be. If we look at this bag in terms of attention to detail, Detail. they've crossed their T's, they've dotted their I's. This one is, they've really covered anything that you can cover. So everything looks as it's supposed to. There's no stitch out of place. Everything is as it's supposed to be. And they've really gone over the item and ensured that everything, everything is there. However, on this bag as well, every stitch is straight. Everything looks as it's supposed to. The things are folded here. Everything is sort of double stitched as well. You could argue that the attention to detail on this bag may be the same. Everything looks about the same. The stitching is straight. They've gone over these edges with another piece of fabric, so they've closed the fabric. They have done all the stitching on the inside. However, the inside is not lined. So if you're looking at an attention to detail perspective, then you could argue that the quality is the same on both of these items. So one thing that I find an interesting paradox within luxury is that there is the expectation that the quality will be perfect so that the item that you get will be perfect. There will not be any stitch out of place. There will not be any marking. The bag will be symmetrical. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be talking about handbags or like leather goods. So the bag will be symmetrical. The stitching will be perfect. The glazing will be perfect. There will be no imperfections within the color. However, there is also the added aspect of the artisanal touch. Artisanal touch essentially means it's like 
If you look at Hermes, for example, the bags are hand-stitched, the bags are handmade. A lot of these houses were founded with that artisanal heritage where it's made by a person. Anything made by a person cannot be perfect in and of itself, just given that humans cannot achieve perfection like a machine. So by having this paradox of demanding perfection, of demanding the perfect good, while also demanding the artisanal quality and the artisanal heritage, the two sort of come to a head where if something is made by a person, it will deviate from time to time. And from, say, like, if you look at the classic flap, we'll get into this in terms of quality control later, but if you look at the classic flap, people demand perfection, but they also demand that artisanal touch where each of the items will look exactly the same, have the same stitching, have the same shape, have the same color across different items, whereas if it's made by a person, they cannot guarantee the same level of perfection multiple times. So other things that are associated with quality are the grade of the material. These two bags differ in that sense. This one is made of a grained calf leather, generally of the highest you know, grade because if it was of a lower grade, then you'd see scratching, you'd see marking, there's very little veining in this bag. So it's a very high grade leather. This one is canvas. Canvas is viewed as a lower grade material, so it won't sort of get the high price. It is a textile, whereas this is a animal skin. The two come from different settings. They are different in terms of how you can get them. This one, obviously, they have to rate the animal. This one, they can just basically grow some cotton and then weave it together. So grade of material and the type of material definitely does play into quality. So leathers, um, exotic leathers, also things like silk, very delicate materials, definitely are on the higher end of the scale in terms of quality. Lower grade materials such as like polyester, polyurethane or fake leather, plastics, as well as general textiles can be viewed more on the lower end of things, which also indicates price. And then obviously within those materials, there are different grades, which will play into quality as well. Another thing that we associate with quality is the durability of the item. So sometimes in luxury, durability and quality cannot mean the same thing. If we buy an item that we expect to be good quality, even though it's maybe in a delicate fabric, we still expect the same durability from it. Whereas an item that may be lower quality, may have a lower grade of material, can have a longer durability than something else. A good classic example is the Chanel lambskin versus the Chanel caviar. So if the Chanel lambskin is less durable by nature, just given that it's a more delicate fabric, is it then lesser quality than the caviar leather? Are they viewed as the same? Does durability play into it? Oftentimes I'll see if it's general wear and tear or like say someone has a bag, it breaks or something, they'll say, oh, this bag is bad quality. This happened a lot when I worked at Nordstrom and I worked in the luxury industry. People would buy an item, let's say like a belt. They would buy a luxury belt. It would get scratched, just general wear and tear, and they would say the item is bad quality. Is it bad quality or is it just not as durable as some of the other items given the nature of the material? And where does quality and durability sort of intersect? I definitely expected this bag to last a long time. I expect it to be fairly durable because I paid so much for it and because it is a classic item. However, durability is not always guaranteed. If you buy something that's silk, it'll degrade faster than other textiles because the fabric is delicate. So if the material is delicate and is less durable, is it lesser quality? Or alternatively, if the material is more delicate, it's technically less durable, but the grade of the material is higher, is it more quality? These are just questions all conversation, let me know what you think down below. So the next point I want to cover is the conflation of quality and price. The luxury industry through marketing has definitely pushed this association where if you pay higher for something, the association is that the quality of the good will be higher. Through a lot of different means, sometimes this is a fallacy, this is a fake sort of association. Just because you pay $3,000 for something and another item is worth $300 doesn't mean the quality is any different. A good example that I've seen recently is this tote bag, but the leather version in comparison to the Celine Nano actually. So they say the leather is very high grade. It's a grained leather. The stitching is all there. The glazing is all there. The price is about one tenth of the price. So is it lesser quality than the other one? It's full leather on the inside as well. So I would love to know what you think. If you pay more for something, does that mean it's automatically higher quality? I think the answer to this is no, in the sense of looking at price increases. So a Chanel Classic Flap, a very good example because they've raised the price continuously, but in association, people have complained that the quality has gone down. So just because you're paying more for something, 
doesn't make it inherently better quality than something else. If you buy a classic flap from two years ago and you pay, let's say, Canadian dollars around 8000 and then you buy one today for 10000 does that mean you're getting $2,000 worth of extra quality? No. A bag from two years ago may actually be better quality than the bag today, just given cost-cutting measures, all of that. Brands will do a lot to make sure that you think you're paying for something that's high quality while also trying to hide various ways that they cut costs. One of that being my next point. Quality and location are often inflated together as well in the luxury industry. So if you think of items, I know a lot of people, especially in relation to LV or Chanel, they'll say, oh, I want an item that's made in France. I don't want an item that's made in Italy. I don't want an item that's made in Spain, Portugal, wherever it may be. There's this heavy association with France as the top quality or anywhere, basically Europe, compared to the rest of the world as like here, the rest of the world is down here in relation to quality goods. And I think the luxury industry has done this as well in relation to brands like Hermes. They only put the made in France symbol, you know, Delbo also made in France, made in Belgium. But then if you look at other brands like Prada, Prada and like Balenciaga and Gucci as well, they may use other areas like Romania or they may use areas like China. So if something is made in China, if something is made in Romania, sort of like a tier two European country, is it inherently lesser quality than something that's made in Italy or something that's made in France? I think the answer to this is no as well. So I think conflating quality with location of production is a fallacy as well. Just because something is made in Italy does not mean it is higher quality than something that is made in China. And I got this from the book Deluxe, How Luxury Lost Its Luster by Dana Thomas. I read this book, oh my god, I read this book four years ago now. I believe it came out in 2008. So it's been out for a long time and a lot of things in the luxury industry have changed since then. But she started getting on sort of the, the rumblings of this change where companies and brands were moving and outsourcing their production from Europe, tier one countries like France, Italy, you know, Spain to tier two countries like Romania, Bulgaria, things like that, as well as China. And then there's also been talk of China sending, you know, workers to Italy to make something. Also the idea that the made in X country is not guaranteed on all goods. And just because it says made in Italy, for example, does not mean that the whole bag and all of the materials were sourced and assembled in Italy. It could just mean that the final touches, such as the stamp, such as the zipper, such as, you know, these rings, like the final touches of the bag or the final touches of the garment were assembled in Italy and the quality control was in Italy. But I have a Prada pouch that was made in China. It is no lesser quality than any of my other Prada goods. I have a Prada bag that's made in Romania. It is no lesser quality than something that's made in Italy. And I noticed this when I worked in Nordstrom as well in relation to, um, it was more so Chinese shoppers at the time where if I would bring out something and they'd say like, oh, where is this made? And I would say, oh, this is made in China. I would say like, mm, don't want it because they associate that with lower quality goods. They associate that with, I guess, not luxury. They want something exotic. They want something different and they want something made in Italy, France, whatever it may be, Europe. Because Europe in the global sense for brands is viewed as the creme de la creme of luxury. That's just where most of the brands hail from, but most of their production does not actually take place in these areas anymore. Also, they use a fast fashion in places like China, in places in Southeast Asia, has had a different impact where for these companies, these fast fashion companies are not going to produce in places like Europe, thus Europe has maintained this illusion that they are of higher quality. In certain senses, they are for sure. You have to pay the workers a different wage compared to areas in Southeast Asia. There's different labor laws. It is definitely much more expensive to produce an item in Europe than it is in other places, but does that necessarily mean the quality is better? It could mean the working conditions are different, like it could have more of a human impact as opposed to an impact on the good itself. So I want to talk a little bit about quality control. Every brand essentially will have a quality control department that will go over the goods, they will make sure that they are legitimate to sell. However, there's been questions around quality control within luxury as of late, especially in relation to all the price increases. People will say LV quality has gone down. 
and that could be because the material quality has gone down. So I know they used a lot of brass before, the brass would not tarnish, now the brass will turn silver. I've also heard, you know, the quality of the canvas has gone down where it used to be a lot thicker, now it's a little bit thinner so it just doesn't age as well. Um, I've also heard things in relation to Chanel where the leather sort of damages faster, the bags don't really hold their shape, there's popped stitches, there's missing stitches, and things like that. So I think in relation to quality control, things have definitely slipped. I think this is because the global market for luxury goods has increased sort of dramatically. It used to be for an elite population where they could really manage the artisanal, you know, creation of these goods as that has expanded, as that has become normalized, gentrified, if you will, they've had to obviously increase the production of these goods. And when anything like that happens, quality control can slip because they're trying to push these goods faster, push these goods harder. They can't basically guarantee the same quality anymore. Is this a fallacy? Could they do it if they really wanted to? For sure, 100%. They could just hire more people to do that. The volume is it's high now, especially if you look at LV, they have like 500 bags on their website. Like they have a lot of products. And then you can get into other brands that are focused on quality. So quality and luxury in the sense of quiet luxury. So brands like Laura Piana, brands like Brunello Cuccinelli, but basically there's brands that are like quiet luxury where the clothes are or the garments are meant to speak for themselves. They're not meant to Basically, the logo isn't meant to speak for them. The brand or the garments are meant to speak for themselves in the sense that Laura Piana, they can sell like a $5,000 cashmere sweater just because the quality of the item is good. The production of the item is good. You would assume that this item is gonna last for a long time. So quality of material, durability, and also high price for these brands equal high quality. Whether or not that's true, you know, that's, for the consumer to decide. I believe quality is just as much subjective as it is objective. Someone has to decide for themselves what quality is for them and what pieces are important for them in order to justify the price or the justify a good. Whereas also there are objective measures of quality such as does an item look like it's quality? Does it sort of tick all the boxes? Does it fall apart? Does it feel nice? Does it feel cheap? And I think all of these things interact together to create a quality good. In terms of final thoughts, I don't always think you're guaranteed quality or what one might assume with quality when paying for a luxury product. Price and quality don't always mix or location and quality don't always mix as well. And I think it's really up to the individual to decide what quality is for them and what sort of metrics are important for them when consuming a good or when considering something. This is just my video. Let me know what you think. Let me know what quality means to you. Let me know what brands you think are quality and sort of how you justify that. And please consider liking, commenting, subscribing. I hope to see y'all next time. Bye guys.